are YouTube Extreme Trains here. Now, I know I said in my previous video that I wasn't going to talk about the other old Thomas Wooden Railway engines every time I reviewed some new Thomas Wood stuff. But here I am doing that because this is the only time I'm going to be able to make a proper comparison to some tender engines um, because there's something else which has changed quite a lot in the Thomas Wood line. So I thought it would be a valid thing to do a comparison to. So here I am doing that comparison. Obviously this feature of this re review is mainly this guy, which is the new 2018 Thomas Wood James. We're going to talk about these ones though in passing. And again, if you want a full detailed view of those ones, go back to my old channel, which can, is a link to on my profile, um, Trains Extreme, and you can find my video where I talked about all my old Thomas Wooden railway stuff. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Thomas Wood James. So let's just uh, decouple him. Quick view of the bottom of both of them. You can just see the kind of writing you get. Same as Thomas and Percy. Let's take a look at what we've got. So I'm just going to rotate this in front of the camera for you just so you get an idea of everything. See it in the flesh. Okay. So as we all know, the face is very important. And I think they've buggered the face up a little bit. Here you go, I'm trying to get some good light. There you go. I understand they were trying to copy the CGI model, but I think the problem is the way the eyes are done is wrong. Like, it doesn't quite look like James. The face looks like James, but the eyes don't quite look like James. Uh, and I don't know how you fix that, but I think in this case, the face is definitely a downgrade, whereas I thought the Thomas and Percy faces are really nice. I don't think the James face is right. It looks funny to me, and that makes me sad. Otherwise, as you can see, we've got the painted detail. Just as a side note, I don't think I pointed this out in the other videos, but, like, they've gone to the effort of painting the buffer beam. But I, in the same way that Trackmaster is wrong and Adventures is wrong, like, they've painted it all red, even though his buffer should obviously be black. Like, I don't understand. At the point at which you're going to bother putting printing on here, how hard is it really to put black in the middle bits and make the rest of it red? That, to me, seems like a really weird, lazy thing. Okay. In terms of the front profile, um, I think James's looks quite nice because, again, you've got the gentle curves here and you've got some gentle shapes. So it doesn't look as jarring as Thomas Thomas's does. Coming around to the side, you can see, again, you've got printing here, printing alongside. You've got the uh, wheel arches printed here. And there's something really interesting I want to do a comparison about. Um, printing on the top. Unlike uh, Thomas and Percy, who had, like, a circle where his dome was supposed to be, James actually just has a hole. There's just no printing where his dome should be. Um, weird gappiness here. I have noticed that a lot of the engines, as you can see here, have like this weird gap in the paint before they get to the tender. And I'm wondering, oh, sorry, the cab. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with like, you can't print that close to another surface. But then I'm like, no, look how close this printing is to the cab. So weird. Again, you've got the printing along here, along his firebox. You've got the hole in the printing where his whistle would be which is a weird choice, I think. Like, I understand it, but it's also very weird. Again, no printing on the back, as you'd expect. That's that there. Coming to the tender. Now, this is where the controversy, I think, really comes in with these Thomas Wood engines. All the tenders are the same. And, I mean, like, yes, all the tenders have been the same, for example, in Thomas Adventures line. But, uh, this is next level the same because it's a block. This is just a block of wood with the cutouts printed into it. And then on top as well, they put a line here to be like, oh, this should be a change in gradient and level, but it's not. Like, printing the coal, eh, fair enough, and it does still have texture. Like, you can feel it is, like, lumpy, which is, is nice, like, um, because of the way it's printed on. But, like, this looks so bad. So bad. Like, look at this. Why do you bother? Like, why not just paint the whole thing red, you know, and be like, oh, well, his tender is inaccurate. Like... Uh, it just looks really dumb and then you know again then you look at the top and I would have actually preferred if they hadn't painted this part because the thing is by not painting here you're supposed to like pretend it doesn't exist but then they paint it on top so you like see this and this and you're like but that's not touching that even the same uh, no I have been very restrained I think in my commentary of Thomas Wood but to me this is awful bad why would you do this Mattel like don't print these parts if you don't want to print it properly, because at least then it wouldn't look really inconsistent from every angle ever. <sighs> 
And then obviously the other thing too I think is quite problematic is that it's not printed on the faces, mm -hmm. like either of them. I I'm glad they printed none instead of printing one. That would look super dumb. Um, but yeah, I think this is something which would have been nice to have some printing here. Hello, love me. But anyway, okay, so that's what that looks like. Let's go back in time then and have a look at these old ones to do a comparison. So this is my circa, you know, 1997. Let's see what the date says on this one. It says 1999. Um, maybe that's more accurate, I'm not sure. Uh, circa James. You can see here, again, a lot of the details that are picked out in this new one are actually present on the old one. Like, you know, the firebox is there. Uh, you've got more detail here, but, you know, you don't have these things. You don't have this. So detail-wise, kind of similar. Um, obviously, this one has the, the old funnels and the dome. Um, this bit hanging out the back. Just to like, take a look at it, I think is important. No printing on the bottom of these ones, but before that, the one thing that this old one really got right is like this to me is exactly how the model series, you know, season one to seven, James's face looked. And it's like, that's really good. I think the face is spot on on this one compared to how it looks in the classic series show, which is obviously what this is modeled after because of the time thing. Quickly, I want to note the printing here is actually lined up with the wheels. Like the wheel arches are lined up with the wheels versus the new one where even though they've like cut out this detail again this is where I'm a bit confused they've cut out this detail so they can be like oh look you know more details but then like obviously these don't line up with these wheels like on Thomas it's weird but it's but it's pretty close you know like that's kind of like oh yeah obviously that's too small but you know it's kind of you know a bit that's how Thomas Wonder Hour has always been the wheels are too big but this just looks real dumb because these don't line up and I'm confused. Like, why would, why? I don't know. And then, um, I mean, obviously this tender is smaller. Like, they've shrunk, as we've already kind of talked about, everything's shrunk. The tenders have shrunk. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I think the tenders were a bit big. Um, and I think the weird thing about Thomas Railways, I think it was fine for James, but then sometimes they also were too small. Like, actually, for Henry and Gordon, what am I talking about? They're way too small. Then for Donald Douglas, they were, like, too big. So, look. The tenders have always been weird in Thomas Wooden Railway, but on this one, even in 997, you had the beautiful textured coal, you could feel it, it's rough, and you you have these, and this, not this, not this nonsense. So, you know, that's that, I suppose. Fast forward a little bit later to the battery-powered, oh, we still have batteries in them, what is a prize? Um, motorized James. Now, I have a motorized Thomas, but I didn't include him because I had, like, you know, other Thomases that were more recent, but I don't have any Jameses that are more recent that aren't special ones, so I was like, well, we'll just include them all. This is quite early in the piece. I'm trying to find a date. 2002, there you go. One of the very first battery-powered engines. Um, has a little light. And you can see, again, I think this one had the weird... This one had a weird face, but it was, like, the face they used for all the merchandising at the time. So it's in that style, even though I don't think it was necessarily very accurate regarding the TV series. These had more details than the normal ones anyway, um, because they had like, you know, the molding here and you could feel this was all relief. But I think that's interesting. Again, notice that the tender didn't really change, except that the number got a bit bigger. Um, you know, this was the same. We've got the printing on the bottom now, but the otherwise that was all the same. I think that's interesting to note. And then we come to the most recent version of this um, figure, or of this engine, rather, that I have, which is 2000. 2003, it says on the wheels, but I think this might have been a little bit later than that. Um, the batteries are dead. He also has a light. But I think, you know, again, this face is, again, in that same kind of style that you had, so it's a very similar face. This one is nice, because oh, look at that. They could print the front of the buffer beam, and they did it sometimes, and it looked really, really nice. See, black buffers. Are you listening, Mattel? Buffers are black. If you're going to go the effort of printing them, why don't you do it correctly? I don't understand. Wheel arches in line with the wheels, even this one, you know? This here, all the gold, the gold striping. Notice there's no gold striping on here. You kind of just have gaps where that would be. Um, and you have a bit of silver, but none of the gold stripes on this James. He's all brown. And again, and see what I mean? Like, this is a little bit dumb. Like, they've got a cut out here, even though it's obviously filled in. But because it's black, it's much less problematic than, um, than it could otherwise be. And again, tender is exactly the same. Didn't change the tender, although we printed on the back of it, which is, again, this is really nice. Like, I don't understand. If you're going to put the printing, why won't you print the buffer? Ah! Dumb. 
Sorry, I'm tr I've been betraying my rage, but very rage. So you can see there um, the different versions of James that I own. Which one would you prefer? I think my personal favorite is this one um, because I think it's a nice balance of like, even though this section is all plastic and the sound effect was really annoying, I think it's a nice balance of detailing. You get the light, you get the buffer beams, you get the nice painting, you get, but it's still a classic face and classic design. I think this one is a little bit a little bit too basic for my liking, considering Thomas Wooden Railway was always very expensive, and I will, you know, if you're going to pay lots of money for it, you should get a nice toy. So, yeah, which one of these would you prefer? Now I'm going to do a quick wrap-up. Oh no, my camera's going to run out of batteries. Okay, I don't have a lot to say, except I am actually collecting Thomas Wood, so I've actually just ordered another $200 worth of it to do some more videos in comparison. So expect more Thomas Wood on this channel, and sorry if you don't like it, but here it's here to stay, so we're going to look at it. Um... But this James, to me, is just sad. If the face is wrong, the design choices are a little bit weird, don't make much sense, and the tender is just garbage. So, unlike Thomas and Percy, where I was like, I could see what they were going for, I could see the aesthetic choices, I actually don't mind them. And I must say, the more I play around with them, the more I actually am starting to quite like the new aesthetic. Shock horror, I know, but I think it, you know, appreciating for what it is, I actually think Thomas and Percy look quite nice. James, to me, is a bit of a fail, and I think he's, yeah, I'm curious to see what Gordon and Emily look like, but if they're anything like this, the tender engines in the Thomas Wooden, Thomas Wood are going to be real disappointing. But let me know your thoughts. Again, I know people are really raging, but try not to rage. Give me actual opinions, which is nice, and be respectful of other people, because I've noticed some people not being respectful, and I'm not going to have any of that kind of nonsense on my channel. Otherwise, do those cool things like commenting. That's what we've got time for. This is Extreme Trains.